Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. Here, here's my thing. You know, Brian, I'm never going to stop asking greater questions and I'm never going to stop pushing that envelope. We have mounds of research from our community, thousands and thousands and thousands of thousands of brain scans. We have thousands of heart rate monitor and heart rate variability measurements to show that our community, in fact, Bond University just released our research and we're, we're writing a paper on it, that our student body could actually self-regulate and change their brain waves in a very, very uh, quick amount of time. They, we understand how to do that. And we understand how to create that kind of coherence. And if you're doing it in a room where there's soft music playing and there's 1,500 people around you and it's safe and, and uh, you're not distracted by your environment and the music's filling the space and your eyes are closed and you're not going anywhere, you're not eating anything, you're not smelling anything, you're not tasting anything, you're not experiencing and feeling anything, and you have the, the ability to pay attention and, and change your brain waves and get beyond your analytical mind and enter your autonomic nervous system, you can begin to produce physiological changes that were that you thought were only once left to yogis and mystics and uh, and masters and turns out that we we can teach people how to do that so if you do that in the environment where you've practiced it and then you return back to your life after a week long retreat and you start reacting to the same circumstances in your outer environment Every person, every object, everything, every place has a neurological network in your brain because you've experienced it. That means it's known. And because you've experienced that boss or that coworker or your drive to work or, or your ex or your cell phone or whatever it is, or where you sleep, where you work, you have an emotion, a feeling associated with it because you've experienced it. So then if you've experienced it, then it's known as well. So you return back to your life and you start responding and reacting to the circumstances in your life. You just went unconscious to the program or you are back in the subconscious program that you're victimized by your environment. Your environment is controlling the way you feel and think. In other words, your thinking and feeling equal to your environment. That means how you think and how you feel is your state of being. You just return back to your old self. Don't expect your life to change because if your personality creates your personal reality and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, you start thinking the same way, acting the same way, and feeling the same way, then you just return back to the same personality and your life will stay the same. So I thought, okay, these people obviously can do it. We have the data to prove it. So now let's, let's take it to the next level. Let's put people in circumstances where that would normally elicit a survival emotion like fear that would drive a subconscious or automatic program for them to go unconscious and do exactly what they've always done when they feel these emotions and throw in a program that would be natural and normal or you put them in a circumstance that elicits that same response and in that moment that is the moment now where they have to self-regulate and they have to go against thousands of years of programming and fear. They have to realize that their legs are shaking, their heart is racing, that now the game is on. And they have to, in that moment, practice the very formula that we've taught them in a circumstance that is challenging them to be greater than their environment, to be greater than their body and, and the response of the body and not rush through it but to master the moment in time. And when people start to do this and they settle their brain and body down, something amazing happens. All of a sudden now, they go further than they normally thought they could go. And when they return back to their lives, uh, they will be less prone to react to the same circumstances. They'll be more conscious because they were conscious in that process. And if they've just done that at 45 feet in the air and they return back to their life and they see a circumstance relative to what they just did, they're going to see this as a much less of a challenge in their environment and they're going to catch themselves and not go unconscious and in that moment self-regulate. And I said to my community when all this happened, hey, all of this training is for now. This is game time. This is where it matters the most.
you have to be able to be greater than your emotions, greater than your habits, greater than trying to predict the familiar future, remembering the, the, the past, and to be greater than the conditions in your environment. And, and that means then that we have to step out of the philosophical role into the practical role. And, and what a great opportunity uh, to move to a greater level of consciousness, a greater level of awareness. And that means that you can't see yourself as victimized or limited. In my response to creating a greater level of awareness for people, I ran right down to the studio and said, okay, let's cut two meditations. Uh, let's create a meditation for uh, people before they go to sleep at night. The last thing they do is to get in touch with elevated emotions and allow the understanding that if the environment signals the gene, and it does, and the end product of an experience in your environment is an emotion, that when you start embracing elevated emotions, your body is so objective. It's the unconscious mind. It does not know the difference between the actual event that's creating that emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone. So the body is believing it's living in a new environment. And in fact, you are signaling the gene ahead of the environment. And your inner environment of your body is getting that chemical that's oxytocin and dopamine and basopressin and all the wonderful chemicals, nitric oxide are causing energy to move into your heart and it's time to repair. And your body gets that signal. It's going to make sense that if you practice this, you're strengthening your inner army. By the same means, this, this center uh, where our adrenals are, people think it's a bad center and it's not. It's your center where you willfully empower outcomes in your life and you want to activate the center and create some energy and then move that energy into your heart and then understand that you can empower the power within and, and practicing that every day and feeling empowered and feeling strength and feeling invincible feeling an uncompromising will. You don't think that those chemicals have an influence on your body, but if people have been conditioned and hypnotized into believing that something in their outer world has to change their inner world, whether it's a substance, whether it's a product, whether it's a, something you consume or you buy or some government or some whatever it is, if you're waiting for something out there to change your inner state and you've been conditioned and programmed your whole entire life that you need something out there to change how you feel in here, then when the when situations uh, get a little bit challenging and there's nothing out there that's going to change that feeling inside of you, this is game time now. This is the moment you realize I'm going to have to change my inner state independent of the conditions in my outer environment and understand that there's science to actually show that you can. So some people will say, well, I'm just going to wait for this or I'm going to wait for that. Well, those are the people that spend their whole life in separation and lack, waiting for their environment to change to feel gratitude. We're saying once you understand the what and the why, uh, then the next question is, why don't you do it? Why not have the experience and understand the how? So if the research is there and not only the evidence that we have in all of the scientific tests that we've done with common people, but there's testimony. There are people that have healed themselves of crazy, crazy health conditions that show us that there is a new consciousness emerging. It is that four minute mile where you pierce through a layer of consciousness that is human limitation. And now all of a sudden, just like the four minute mile being broken, this is the this is a, a new consciousness. People are healing from stage four cancers. They're, they're healing from uh, all different kind of, of health conditions because every day they assign meaning to what they're doing. They, they're, they're, they're in the game and every moment matters for them. They're overcoming, they're overcoming, they're overcoming. And every time they overcome, they're starting to become somebody else. And yeah, it's not easy all the time. I can tell you that from experience. But I don't know any other alternative that's gonna give people, empower people to realize uh, how, how powerful they really are. So I wanna create meditations that are important for people in this time, whether it's empowering the power within or, or falling into love with your body. I want, I want people not to just do it mindlessly. I want them to understand when they do that and why they do that is gonna help them to understand 
how to surrender to the process and understand that they become more unlimited as a result of it.